Good afternoon and welcome to Markets Today. It's the first day of December, so a happy new month to you from us here at Markets Today and the wider family at Metropole TV. It's very exciting because it's been an interesting year in one way or the other. So coming to the culmination of the year is a time just to reevaluate and figure out what you want to do for next year. Here on Markets Today, we will sort of try and get a summary of what have been the pot, uh, pertinent conversations that have come through our desk so that we can help you articulate what your financial goals or, if you like, your investment goals need to be for next year. So keep it locked here on Markets Today. Each and every single Friday, we will have a tidbit just specific for you to help you amalgamate your financial position as well as plan for the future. Now, the market yesterday was quite excited to celebrate the end of the month. You know why? Because turnover jumped 196 percentage points to 1.7 billion shillings in terms of the value that was traded yesterday. We saw a huge trade done in Safaricom, and I will talk about that later, but the foreign investors were actually driving demand on the exchange. Overall, foreign investors made up 73% of the total activity on the market, with a bias towards purchasing more of the blue chip companies where they accounted for 84%, whereas in purchases, they were 64% of the market. Safaricom was the big trade, but let's take a look at some of the other matrices that we used to um, take a look at the market. Then I will explain what was happening on Safaricom. The indices were all up as expected. Safaricom is now trading at 32.7. It has a material weighting on each and every index that you actually see on your screen right now, meaning that once it goes up in price, then we expect a similar trajectory in as far as the indices are concerned. Safaricom was up 2.5 percentage points yesterday, and this resulted in a 1.9 percentage change to the NSC All Share, which closed at 145.2 points. The NSC 20 share gained 1.88 percentage points to close the day at 1,759.93 points, whereas the NSC 25 share was up 21.35 percentage points to close the day at 3,264.15. Let's take a look at what was happening on turnover. We have been tracking turnover for the entire month of November. This shows you what has been happening from 20th of November. Hopefully tomorrow our harvest team will be able to give us the data points for the entire month. But just for your benefit, this has been the highest volume we have seen over the last couple of weeks, if not the entire month of November, with the market gaining 169 percentage points over the day to close at 1.7 billion shillings. Let's see what this was made up of. Okay, so we have there the movers by turnover. Safaricom, 23.7 million shares are traded. The price has now gained slightly over two percentage points to close at 32.7. This material trade was driven largely by the foreign investors. They made up close to 100% of the demand and they were also partly part of the supply of the market. Now, over the last two weeks, we have actually been seeing a bit of uh, foreign buying in this particular stock. The largest volume that we saw was 19 million shares about one and a half weeks ago. And then now yesterday, 23.7 million shares, pushing up the price to 32.7. We have been expecting a bit of weakening just because we're getting into the month of December, but it does seem like there's a lot of foreign demand that's actually driving up the price and maybe worth a reconsideration in terms of does this price make sense. At 32.7, we actually feel that it's fairly priced. In other words, 32.7 does reflect the future earnings power for this particular stock. But possibly there could be something that the foreign investors are seeing there. But what I find interesting is two weeks ago, I sat in on a conversation that was uh, facilitated via LinkedIn. And we had Mobes, who runs one of the larger investment firms globally, talk about technology and infrastructure in Kenya. And he did say that he has been investing in Safaricom because it is laying the railroads in terms of setting up the technological infrastructure for Kenya. 
as well as having its sights on other countries such as Ethiopia. It could be that that kind of sentiment is what is driving the foreign investor base into buying this company for the future. Equity Group lost ground in terms of price, which closed at 34.6 for 15 million shares that were traded over the day for a cumulative turnover of 536 million Kenya shillings. KCB Group, holding steady at about 37 shillings per share, 6.5 million shares were traded for a total turnover of 240 million shillings for the day. East African breweries lost a bit of ground there. The price is now at 153, whereas in the last week it closed at 155. It traded 479,500 shares for a cumulative turnover of 73.3 million. BK Group, which has been up there in terms of the trading volumes, has been seeing a lot of foreign interest, both on the buy side and on the sell side. And yesterday, it traded 13.5 shillings, that was the average price, for a consideration of 1.5 million, coming to a turnover of 20.5 million shillings. That's the turnover for the day. Big ticket item, Safaricom, trading 23.7 million shares at a price of 32.7 for a turnover of 775 and in a way giving us the largest trade that we have seen in this particular month. There you have the top movers again, Safaricom up there, 23 million, Equity 15 million, KCB 6.5, BK 1.5, Kenjin 712. Let's take a look at who are the price movers and gainers over the day. Kabasid, we've talked a lot about this, again, almost hitting the 10 limit mark, and it gained 9.72 percentage points to close the day at 11.85. Nothing much happening there except for Kenya Power, which recouped some of the prior day losses to close at 1.44. Kabasid continues to trade little volumes. It's largely retail volumes. And this is on the back of the material announcement that came in last week. Kabasid has put out its intent to acquire 100% of the ownership of BOC gases. That's a conversation that has been happening for the last 15 years. Talk about never saying die. At least the shareholders of this particular stock have been gaining a bit of momentum for the last couple of days. Let's see who the top losers for the day were. The top losers were largely dominated by the small cups there. East African Portland down 8 percentage points to 11 shillings. TPS Eastern, TPS Serena, I beg your pardon, down 6.69 percentage points to 13.95. And Jubilee Holdings was the key one there. It lost ground 3.57 percentage points to close the day at 270. That's pretty much what was happening on the NSE yesterday by virtue of activity. Monday is normally a bit of a quiet day, but yesterday we did see a lot of interest from the foreigners, pushing up the total turnover to 1.7 billion shillings for that particular day. Safaricom, key pusher there, 23.7 million shares traded at a price of 32.7. What a way to close the trading month, especially for the traders that were able to facilitate that. Certainly a tidy sum earned there by virtue of commission. On corporate news, it's a bit of a lean day for us here when you're looking at the financial markets in Kenya, not too much happening. But when we take the break, when we come back, we want to sort of unpack a topical conversation that has been here on, on, on and off affecting the macro economy in terms of looking at Kenya at a global level. Debt level and debt sustainability, it's becoming an increasing concern. Today, we want to understand is there a possibility of Kenya restructuring its debt? If not, then what does this mean? This is a very pertinent conversation to have, especially when you are looking at it as an investor coming in from outside to the inside, and you want to understand where is the debt looking, what is happening to currency, what is happening to the current account deficit, and after all of this, understand what the outlook for currency and interest rates possibly looks like as well as inflation, so that as you are planning for the next calendar year, you have a good sense in terms of the investment case for Kenya. We take a short break. When we come back, I will introduce our guest in studio. In the meantime, 20146, that's our SMS line. What would you like to know? Are you a buyer of Safaricom? Are you a seller? 
at 32.7, would you still be considering to buy it? Would you like to know how you can be able to participate in this market? That is all that we can be able to give you, if not more. But we would like to hear your voice, 20146, or at Metropole TV on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Alternatively, you could reach out to me. That's at Mbithe Moema on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Let's keep this conversation going. And more importantly, when it comes to the end of the month, happy new month to you, but what are your investment goals for this particular month? Let's take a short break. When we come back, we get to the conversation of Kenya and the element of debt and the possible consequence of restructuring this particular debt. See you after the break.